Well, it really wasn't very well planned, my foray into Lepidoptera. I actually wasn't trained as an entomologist. I was trained as an ecologist, and I previously studied lizard ecology in the West Indies, and then salamander ecology when I moved to Clemson. I became interested in insecticide resistance as an evolutionary problem. And um, I happened to be at Clemson University where I met Dr. Tom Brown, who was working on the tobacco budworm, Heliothus fluorescens, a problem with a uh, species with a lot of resistance problems, but uh, hardly anybody had studied it from a genetics point of view. So I thought this would be a good thing to try. And so it was the uh, desire to understand which genes are involved in conferring insecticide resistance in a real crop pest that led me to uh, working on a lepidopteran. So that's continued in a variety of other systems as well. I think it's a fascinating group of organisms with its own advantages, but also its own problems. Um, but uh, now I'm interested in a number of other aspects, including host plant interactions and also the pheromone communication system of lepidoptera. Well, in fact, we had no idea and did not suspect that ABC transporters could at all be involved in BT mode of action because nobody had ever made any association at all between ABC transporters and the mode of action of BT. And so we were actually led by the genetics to this result, and it was a big surprise when we first found it out, and we sort of had to come up with an explanation. And the idea that we came up with was that the ABC transporters offer the pore the entry mechanism into the membrane. And so it's actually involved in the pore insertion step, but we had no uh, idea to begin with, but now it's turning out to be important in resistance to other BT toxins as well. And so it was really, we were led to that point by the genetic approach that we took, which didn't make any assumptions really as to what the resistance mechanism would be. Well, for the Cry1A toxins, it's very well established that the Cry1A toxins bind to amino peptidases, to alkaline phosphatases, and to the 12 cadherin domain protein. We just don't know whether the Cry2A toxins uh, interact with those same uh, uh, molecules. It has been hard to find out actually what the Cry2A toxins had been binding to, and so only fairly recently uh, the work of the lab of Juan Ferre found that, that in fact there was specific binding of Cry2A to midgut receptors. So it doesn't seem to be binding to the cadherin, to the amino peptidase, or to the alkaline phosphatase, but that might just be because the binding is so hard to measure. So we can't rule it out completely. Yes, I do think that our result in Helicoverpa armidura will be general at least to other species of Lepidoptera that are susceptible to the Cry2A toxins. So I think it's highly likely that if there's really high resistance in the pink bollworm to the Cry2AB toxins, there will be a mutation in its ABCA2 um, transporter. Now the, uh, the Cry2A toxins are also active against Diptera. And so it's an open question as to whether or not the same sort of transporter is involved in diptera. We don't know anything about that. Um, that would be very interesting to try to find out. But I think our results will be directly relevant to other cases of field-evolved cry-2-AB resistance in other lepidoptera.